Good morning and welcome to America's Home Cooking. Today, I'm sure anybody who has been trying to make their sourdough culture, it's time I talk to you about how you feed it. Now, when you get your sponge culture started, you put it in a jar and you take some of it and you put it in another jar. These measurements are for a quart. So remember that this is the feeding I give every day to these two that I have. Now, when you get your sponge culture going, you take some of it and you put it in another jar. And what you're going to feed it, and this will convert it into a liquid culture. You are going to give it, now you're gonna need a scale for this one. I'm sorry, I can't do it any other way. You need two, no, one and a half ounces of bread flour, which I just put into my scale here, I'll show you. I'm measuring my scale out right now and the reading is right here. You just can't see it. This one definitely has to be handled this way. Now before I pour it in, this is my liquid culture. Remember, I almost used it all. I beat it down and mix it up. Now, it will have a nice smell to it. It's going to be, it's a sourdough, so it's going to have some sour smell to it. All right, let me make sure that this is one and a half ounces. This is really fine to read. I have a scale that reads grams and ounces. Yeah, I'm right in the middle. Between one, <laughs> one and two ounces. So this is one and a half ounces of bread flour. Now you can get cold water. So what you have to do is take some of your bread flour, put it in another jar, and we're going to convert it right into a liquid culture. And this is how we're going to do it. It takes about three days, three to four days, and you'll have it balanced out. Now you need two ounces of cold water. That's it. That's the feeding I give every day to my sponge culture. Now I don't need these anymore because this, I need my liquid culture. This is what I feed my liquid culture every day. And because I make a lot of bread, I think you know that, and I work with a lot of flour. And what you do is you beat it. And as you can see, this one's more runny. This is your liquid culture. It takes three days to convert part of your sponge into a liquid, but that's the measurements I give mine every day. Now, we're gonna move over to the sponge culture. The liquid culture is always, always, that ratio that I just gave you. One and a half ounces of bread flour to two ounces of water. And you have to do it by a scale. Do not try converting it into weights. It will not work. Now here is my sponge culture. You see how thick it is? It's much thicker. This one's really tacky. Since I'm not using my sponge culture today and I have too much in this jar, I know it's gonna go up and I'll find it in the refrigerator because it will come right off and over even with the lid tight. I take some of this and I'll pour it into my compost or you can pour it down the sink. I have to make room for it. And because these are live cultures, if you don't feed them, what happens is, is they run out of food and they die. This is why I sit there and I have to feed mine every day. Now this one actually takes one fourth of a cup of flour and three tablespoons of water. Now, my lovely girlfriend she gave me this beautiful 1 8 cup or 30 milliliters which equals two tablespoons and it has a one tablespoon marking on the side so two of these level 
will equal one fourth cup flour. Red flour. Remember, it's red flour that we have to use. Now that's all for that. And now we're going to add the water. Where did I put the cap for this one? Oh. There's two tablespoons here. Okay. Now, I have a marking for one tablespoon, and I'll just pour it to that one tablespoon line. That's three tablespoons. And you beat this one up, too. That's why I do every morning. I beat them up. And this is their home, and I keep them in the bottom part of the refrigerator because I don't want them to freeze. I keep them on the bottom shelf in the front. So I remember, other than that, I'll forget them. Uh, this one has a stronger flavor, smell, I mean flavor, a stronger smell than the liquid. And when you stir it, it'll come up. hear him? You know why he's crying? Because he can't sit in my lap. He wants to sit in my lap all day long, purring and me petting him. And I have a life outside of that. And I told him, I can't do this. So when I wake up in the morning, he is right there, sleeping on my head, right at my face. So he gets his pets in the morning. <laughs> and you can get him in the afternoon or if I sit down to eat, man, he's he's racing to get in my lap. I said, no, you can't, I'm eating now. But he's my little love bug. Okay, that's what I do every morning to feed my two cultures. I have not got the end corn started yet, but when I do, I will show you. Uh, so that's, I've showed you how to make the culture. Now remember, don't get discouraged if it doesn't work in three to five days like they say. I had one that took me 50 days as soon as you see it lifting and bubbling you've caught them and then you just start feeding them every day and I'm sure you'll see the difference and then you can start using it and start making sourdough breads rolls and stuff you can make pancakes you can make sweet breads with it I haven't shown you how to do that yet but we'll get around to all of those things as well waffles so there's a lot that you can do with the sourdough that you do with the regular bread. And I've also been trying to convert some of my regular breads over to sourdough as well. So, like I use the end corn in my bread, the bread that I made yesterday, the peasant black bread, it's delicious. I didn't know if it was going to work, but it did. I, I used it in place of the, uh, which one, the all purpose that we buy in the store and I didn't think it was gonna work but it did but it does need a longer time to rise because it doesn't have the uh, gluten that the high gluten that we have in the new flowers of today because remember that's one that was would you be quiet no no he's gonna get the last word I'm losing anyway remember that in corn is the original grain of how it was. It had more of a wheat germ, which had more B vitamins and minerals and everything else in it. And it had a husk on uh, the bran, which was thicker as well. But there was less starch in it. Remember, they have converted these grains and hybrids and crossed them and everything. So now instead of two chromosomes and very little starch, we get a lot of starch, we get less wheat germ and less bran. So that flour and going takes longer to do, but it does it different. When we make our starter, you'll see what I'm talking about. I'll, I'll see you later. Take care. Oh, I might be cleaning the oven tomorrow, so I might not see you till Wednesday. The weather's going to dictate what I'm going to do, but sometime this week I have got to clean my oven. And when I clean my oven, I am not cooking. All right, so I'm just warning you, if you don't see me one day this week, it is because I am cooking. Take care. Bye-bye.